Hey, this is my Italian film spotlight and today I'm talking about a thriller. It's from the early 70s. The director is Dario Argento and the film stars Tony Musante, Susie Kendall, Enrico Maria Salerno, Mario Adolf, uh, Giuseppe Castellano and uh, Umberto Rao and I'm talking about Dario Argento's debut film Bird with the Crystal Plumage. It's a film that has defined the direction Italian giallo would take for the next uh, half a decade. It's a film that contains all the key elements which would uh, make Dario Argento into an internationally celebrated filmmaker throughout the 70s. It's a magnificent example of an Italian thriller done right. I love this film. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage has its share of murders, but they're all relatively tame and I think if you are expecting uh, extreme bloodletting then this may not be a film for you. You might be better off watching something like uh, Tenebre or Deep Red or maybe uh, a nice uh, giallo from uh, Fulci such as the New York Ripper maybe where there is plenty of blood. The first time I saw Bird with the Crystal Plumage it wasn't in its original aspect ratio and I remember sort of brushing it aside as a kind of a tame early attempt from the great Argento but as uh, time passed I have uh, come back and revisited Bird with the Crystal Plumage a number of times and it has really grown on me and it is now one of my absolute most beloved thrillers to come out of Europe throughout the 70s. The film gets so many things right. It's an early example of an, of an Dario Argento film where he's still interested in directing his actors. He hasn't yet given up on trying to elicit decent performances from them. And he hasn't yet shifted his focus from storytelling to spectacular set pieces. So this is a more of a classical, almost Hitchcockian film from Argento in the sense that we are squarely always focused on the story and how the events unfold and how the plot twists carry the story forward. Later on, of course, Dario Argento would be more celebrated for his set pieces and uh, his great uh, way of uh, filming uh, elaborate, highly stylized death scenes sometimes or oftentimes at the expense of the plot or basic uh, believability. I think for people who are new to Argento, this film is a very good introduction to his uh, work because it already contains all of his key themes and his uh, extremely mm, and his extremely carefully constructed visuals and some very taut editing. Considering the film is from 1970, even nowadays young filmmakers could learn in terms of how to put a scene together in the montage, in the editing, from this film. Dario Gento really had great luck in having Franco Fraticelli work for him, work with him on most of his uh, celebrated films, including this one, The Man with the Crystal Plumage. It's a very nicely edited film. There is a great number of creatively uh, conceived and carried out uh, transitions between the scenes. So from the technical standpoint, the film is brilliant, both with the camera moves, there are some nice impressive tracking shots. There is great widescreen photography. As I mentioned, the editing is very well done for a film of its vintage. And the sound effects, and especially the score from Ennio Morricone. Do not disappoint either. The sound of the bird with the crystal plumage is something unforgettable. It's got a fantastic score, not just the opening credits, not just the main theme, but there are great jarring dissonant cues for the suspense scenes and the killer's attacks, which really put you in the atmosphere of this film, of this murder mystery. W what sets The Bird with the Crystal Plumage apart from uh, Dario Gento's later and better known uh, thrillers is its focus on the investigation. In this early film, we can definitely trace the influences back to the uh, golden age uh, 
mysteries such as uh, those written by, for example, uh, Agatha Christie. We see uh, the protagonist, uh, played by Tony Musante, visit the lab together with, with the cop, played by uh, Enrico Maria Salerno, and there we have the first uh, choice of uh, leads to follow up, the first selection of uh, clues which uh, they have been able to uh, find at the crime scene. The main piece of uh, evidence is a black leather glove which the assailant has uh, left behind. From the particles inside the glove, from the wear of the glove and from some blood droplets of blood in it, there is a whole range of deductions which can be made and all this data is then fed into this huge ancient computer which is uh, operated with this magnetic tape I think and uh, perforated uh, like perforated paper cards or something which is really really fascinating uh, fascinating looking at it today this helps the cops compile like a preliminary profile of the assailant and from then on the protagonist Sam Dalmas is uh, set on the tr on the trail he goes about I interviewing people to try and get to the uh, bottom of the mystery so we follow the protagonist gathering clues and uh, interviewing people to try and uh, unravel the mystery which is something found in the classic murder mysteries from the 1930s for example and as Argento's career progressed he would uh, gradually abandon this kind of uh, thorough investigation and presentation of clues and evaluation of clues and piecing together of the puzzle and he would just uh, limit himself more to the thriller domain so there would be progressively less and less murder investigation screen time and more and more murder set pieces screen time so uh, I guess another reason why uh, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage is a special film in the Argento canon is because it's a bridge between the earlier more sleuthing uh, focused approach to um, this kind of cinema and the later more spectacular and perhaps bombastic uh, type of uh, violent Italian thriller where special effects would be a lot more prominent and where uh, the kills would be a lot more sadistic and uh, graphically uh, presented. Whereas here we're still very much um, in the classic uh, detective story uh, narrative, albeit transposed from uh, Great Britain to Rome in the early 70s which uh, is a character in itself in the film. There are some wonderful uh, exterior uh, scenes uh, filmed on location in Rome, which looks incredibly poetic and inviting, I would say, in uh, Bird with a Crystal Plumage. In Bird with a Crystal Plumage, the city is cozy. It's populated with mainly amusing and friendly characters. Bird with a Crystal Plumage is slightly less disturbing. It's not as mean-spirited, perhaps, as the films that would come from Argento over the next years because they would uh, get more and more sadistic. The Bed with the Crystal Plumage is definitely a must-see film for those interested in the Italian giallo cinema because this film is a cornerstone and had Argento only just directed that one film his name would still have been definitely consecrated as one of the important practitioners of the Italian thriller but of course he would take all the principal ingredients already present in this film and develop them towards a more personal vision, towards a more extreme vision of uh, thriller cinema in his uh, coming films. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage is a very lean film. It runs just over 95 minutes and the pacing is very decent for a film conceived around 1969. It doesn't drag, there isn't any unnecessary padding. Unlike many thrillers which would come in the following years when the floodgates opened, there aren't any long uh, sex scenes or long uh, filler scenes just to pad out the running time to reach the desired 90 minutes. What you have here in the bed with the crystal plumage is 
very lean material it every scene is uh, moving the story forward it all contributes towards uh, bringing us to the exciting uh, final reveal and there is a very good cast here Tony Musante although then they didn't get on with Argento he does a very good job with the protagonist Sam Dalmas he's the first of the many artistically minded uh, heroes in Argento's films he's a writer the Bird with the Crystal Plumage also has a great uh, cameo appearance by the legendary Swiss actor Mario Adolf, who you might remember from um, Fernando de Leo's film uh, Manhunt, or from Aldo Lado's excellent Giallo uh, Short Night of Glass Dolls. Mario Adolf has an unforgettable wig in this film, and The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, he is this uh, deranged um, painter who provides uh, Sam with another clue on his uh, way to unmasking the killer. And let's not forget that uh, this uh, character, the painter, uh, comes uh, originally from Frederick uh, Brown's novel, The Screaming Mimi, where the character was originally a sculptor. So a lot of the key pl plot points, and to a great degree, the final reveal, the final surprise, have been uh, borrowed by Argento and then credited writer Aldo Lado from uh, this excellent uh, thriller written by uh, Frederick Brown, which I recommend you to seek out and read because uh, The Screaming Mimi is a decent book in its own right and it's one of Frederick Brown's better known and more easily available works. You know, on a scale of uh, 10, I would give uh, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage 10.5 because of its incredible uh, influence, of its incredible importance in the Italian uh, thriller canon. I love this film and I never tire of it because it has so many facets. Besides a well-constructed, a tightly wound murder mystery, there is beautiful scenery and there is good acting and the an unforgettable score by Morricone. So this film comes. So this film comes highly recommended.